African American men, football players, were not always able to go to a PWI, right? That, that the schools that they were able to go to were HBCUs. Or many look at it as Travis Hunter, what are you doing, man? That's untraditional, you going to an HBCU, why not? Well, in the past, that's where only someone like himself would have been able to go to. What up, everybody, man? It's your boy, JK, man. Today is Thursday, so you already know what it is. It's Tackle Thursday with JK, live on IG, live on Facebook, and I'm recording for my YouTube channel, which y'all can go subscribe after this episode. My YouTube channel is Jeremy Kellum, so be sure to go and subscribe. When you subscribe, tell like three of your friends to go and subscribe as well. I believe I got some dope content on there, man. Uh, man, but today, man, today I'm tackling the topic. You tackling the topic. We tackling the topic. A great day for HBCU football, man. We tackling the topic today. The topic for Tackle Thursday with JK. Today's podcast episode is right a great day for hbcu football all right and so man if, if if you don't know what happened or transpired yesterday all right you've been living under a rock you know what i'm saying at least even if you don't follow sports i'm pretty sure you probably scroll down your your timeline or you turned on the tv i see even seeing it on cnn so if you're watching your world news you probably it probably made world news man yesterday all right Deion Sanders, Jackson State University. So Deion Sanders, the head coach of Jackson State University, football coach, right? Got the number one recruit in the nation. Like what Travis Ward say, best in the nation. Number one recruit in the nation to commit to Jackson State University. Right. And so if you don't follow football, or you don't really know about football or college football specifically, you wouldn't know how big of a deal this really is for an HBCU. Those that might not know what HBCU is, historically black college and or university. All right. So. To for Dion to pull that off. Right. Is amazing. To get the number one recruit in the nation. Now, this is somebody that could have went anywhere. You know what I'm saying? He was committed to Florida State University. He decommitted and chose Jackson State over Florida State. Over all the Power 5 schools, he chose a HBCU, right? Which is huge, man. And, and the fact, you know, it's, it's, it's big, uh, just like you said, it changed the game forever, right? Especially if, if 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 it's a domino effect for top football prospects, high school football prospects, especially those um, of uh, uh, that are African American, choosing to go to a historically black college or university, right? And so, the the, the I, I I've been listening to a lot, you know, seeing different stuff on timelines, watching different talk shows, and the thing about I hear a lot of, you know, a lot of people are in, up, in uproar, in disbelief, trying to figure out, like, man, like, what he doing? Why, why would he choose? Or, or, or did he make the right idea? Right? Did he make the right choice? Or, or right? And, and, and I see, I heard somebody burn uh, uh, Deion Sanders' Florida State college jersey, right? Like, it's like people in their feelings. People feel like, oh, he made a bad decision, whatever the case may be, right? Because. Many people think that it's not, he didn't make the traditional decision, right? And traditional can be subjective or relative, right? Depending on who you ask. So if you ask somebody like me, who when I grew up, all I knew was UM, Florida State, um, you know, big BCS schools. That's all I knew. I, I knew to, hey, go to high school, try to go play D1, go to a, at that time, it was a BCS school, or go D1. That was all, it was, it was go D1, right? And unbeknownst to me, I didn't realize all of the tradition, what was the traditional way for, for black players like myself that was coming out of high school where they went to school. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't aware 
Because at that point, like I said, I grew up in a culture in a time where the popular thing to do was to go D1 and you normally went to a PWI school. And that's why I went. That jersey that's hanging behind me is from a PWI, Middle Tennessee State University, which I love with all my heart. They play tomorrow in the uh, Bahamas Bowl. So y'all check that out tomorrow, 12 o'clock noon, right? Um, 11 o'clock Central, right? So that's what I knew. So to me, that's what tradition is. That's traditional for a high school football player to, to, to play his four years of high school and then go to college, go D1. And if he goes D1, he's going to choose a PWI. That, that was what traditional is or was or is. That's what I knew, right? That's what I chose to do. That's what I've seen other people doing. My favorite college is UM, right? University of Miami, along with my school. But University of Miami is a PWI. Middle Tennessee State University is a PWI. So that's what I knew. And so that is what tradition it was to me. But what Travis Hunter did yesterday, to many people it was untraditional. But if you were to go back in history, you will realize that, nah, it's really not untraditional, it's traditional. Like what he chose to do is can really be viewed as as he's just following tradition, right? So, so you know, for this podcast, for this episode, man, I had to do some research because I wanted to make sure when I came and I and can I came and I talked to those, you know, what I'm saying that are listening or that that will watch this, that I make sure that I bring history with, with with what I'm talking about today and why this move by Travis Hunter is so so big for HBCU football, for HBCUs, for, 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 for other high school African-American players, but even people that aren't African-American if they choose to go to HBCU route, right? So I'm gonna do a, a little history, right? Why Travis Hunter, his move, why it was traditional opposed to what most people believe that his move is untraditional, but it was traditional, right? And this is why, because if you really look at it, African American men, football players, were not always able to go to a PWI, right? That that the schools that they were able to go to were HBCUs. So while we look at it as, oh, or many look at it as Travis Hunter, what are you doing, man? That's untraditional. You going to an HBCU? Why not? Well, in the past. That's where only someone like himself would have been able to go to, right? And so if we rewind all the way back to 1862, I'm going history now, 1862, they had came out with the Morrell Act, right? Good, y'all can look this up now. The Morrell Act was a land grant act. So the government gave out money to create uh, land grants, right? Gave out money to create institutions, college in institutions, right? Well, people took that money, built colleges, but ostracized and segregated the colleges and kept those that were black and people of color away from those schools. So when the money, so when the, 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 the Morale Act of 1862 was created, these land grants built these colleges, but they made them PWIs. So even though the money was given, colleges, institutions were built, blacks could not attend. Right? So when you look at an Alabama, when you look at a UT, when you look at a Georgia, when you look at uh, all these, 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 these schools with rich tradition, PWIs, well, no blacks going to those schools. They weren't allowed to. So we see, we look on TV and we see these football uh, uh, stadiums or we see these football teams at Alabama, at, at Georgia. Uh, look, just look at the college playoff. Predominant, their whole team predominantly is black, or players of color, right? African American players. But if you were to rewind, blacks couldn't attend those schools. So, like I said, 1862 Morrell Act, that was a land grant act. The government gave out money for people to build institutions. They created PWIs and kept blacks from attending, right? Now, the first ever college football game was in 1869. So seven years after the first Morrell Act was created, right, the first college football game was played. It was played between New Jersey 
and Rutgers. So that's why I like Rutgers got the, the statue outside because they had the first football game, college football game ever. Now this is 1869, right? 1869. So then, in eight, it wasn't until 1890 the second Morrell Act was created. Why was it created? Well, people looking around like, hold on, y'all didn't build these colleges. Y'all didn't build up these institutions, but blacks can't attend. Where the black people gonna go? Where the people of color? Where African American people gonna go to school at? We wanna learn too. We got the ability, the capabilities to learn, right? So guess what? They had to come out with another Morrell Act. 1890. 1890, the second Morrell Act was created. Hence, that's when we start to get this flux of HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities, created. Why? Because the first Morrell Act in 1862 created colleges but kept blacks away. And then so they had to come back. Think about all those years from 1862 all the way to 1890. That's when they started. The, the influx of, of HBCUs were created. Right? So the first ever college football game was between Rutgers and New Jersey in 1869. Right? It wasn't until 1892 that the first black college or black intercollegiate college game was played. Right? And that involved, I'm coming out, hey, I'm dropping history now on y'all today. That, that involved Biddle College, which is now known as Johnson C. Smith University, and Livingstone College. So in 1892, right, it was the journey to the Cricket Celebration Bowl. Hence, that is what Jackson State, right, is about to play South Carolina State in the Celebration Bowl. So we understand the history. The first ever HBCU, a black intercollegiate game, was in 1892, right? 1892. So, so when we looking at Travis Hunter and people are like, why in the world would this man go to Jackson State? Why, like, why would he, why would he do something untraditional? No, he did something that's traditional. It's traditional because at a point of time in history, blacks couldn't go. They were not playing at UT. They were not playing at Alabama. They were not playing at Georgia. They were not playing at Florida State. They were playing at historically black colleges, right? And so when we say that, when I say that, that what Travis Hunter is doing is traditional, I want you to hear this list of Hall of Fame players that, that came from historically black colleges. And this is why I say that what Travis Hunter did by, 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 by choosing to go to HBCU, why it's traditional is because when you look at the, some of the greatest players ever to lace up a pair of cleats and play the game of football and then go to the NFL and our Hall of Famers, kept, they held from historically black colleges and universities, right? So y'all so y'all check out this list. Y'all check out this list that I'm about to drop to y'all right now. That, just let's listen. Listen to this list right here, right? Here this list go. You had Lim Barney, Jackson State, right? You had Mel Blunt. Mel Blunt now. Mel Blunt, Southern University. Let me get enough. Richard Dent, Tennessee State University. Bob Hayes. Now, I grew up, I didn't know Bob Hayes went to film until I was watching Why Not the series Why Not Us on ESPN Plus that's following Coach Simmons and, and Fam U, right? They talk about Bob Hayes. I associated Bob Hayes. I associated him like up there in Tallahassee, but I didn't know Bob Hayes went to fam, right? So Bob Hayes, fam you. Let me go down here. Deacon Jones, Mississippi Valley State. Deacon Jones. These are Hall of Famers now. Larry Little, Bethune Cookman. Walter Payton, Sweetness, Jackson State University. Jerry Rice, some consider the best football player regardless of position to ever play the game. Jerry Rice, Mississippi Valley State. My boy, Uncle Shay Shay, man. Uncle Shay Shaw. Savannah State. Art Shell. University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Jackie Slater, Jackson State. 
Michael Strahan, Texas Southern. Come on, dog. Aeneas Williams, Southern, Southern University. Like, think about that list. Look at this. And there's some PWIs that have no Hall of Famers. And so when I say what Travis Hunter, what he did, most people are going to say, oh, it's untraditional. Nah, bruh. Let's go back. Let's look at history. What Travis Hunter did is traditional. What he, what he did was, 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 was what the people that paved the way did. Because they was forced to. They had to go to, e to HBCUs. They had to. So, before we jump to the gun and say, man, Travis Hunter making a bad decision. Before we jump to the gun and say, man, he, 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 he doing an untraditional thing. Man, let's look at history. He's just doing what some of the greats, so many greats did before him, which was go to an HBCU, dominate, ball out, and go to the league and have a phenomenal career, right? So, what Travis Hunter is doing is traditional. It's not untraditional. It's traditional when you take history into consideration, right? And so, the thing that frustrates me a lot of times, man, is what a lot of these leagues or cop systems, systems that we have in America, America, we play the game Monopoly, right? And Monopoly is all about uh, you know what I'm saying? Monopolizing everything on the board, right? Whoever gets the most property, you monopolize it. You you buy it and you monopolize the board. And once you buy most of everything, then, then it's yours, right? And when you look at the systems, the professional leagues in America or, or, or college systems in America, that's what they're all about is monopolizing, right? And so when you look at Baseball, the Negro League, the Negro League was thriving. The, league, the Negro League was excelling. The Negro League was doing phenomenal. It was great. So when people think that football is the sport in the African-American community, it's not. When people think that basketball is the true foundational sport in the black community, it's not. Baseball. Baseball was the pastime for, for blacks. Baseball is, 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 is what African Americans did. And if you think I'm lying, do your research. I had to write a whole paper in college about it, right? And so what happened with the, the, the Negro League is that Major League Baseball, which was segregated, didn't want no blacks to, to, to get in, right? So why, that's why black African Americans had to start a Negro League. But the MLB realized how good the, some of the players were. The players were in the Negro League. So guess what Major League Baseball did? They started to monopolize. Oh, Jackie Robinson, come over here. Satchel Paige, come over here. You, come over here. And so now they started to pick the best players from the Negro League, which weakened the Negro League because all the best players were now going to Major League Baseball. And so when the best players went to Major League Baseball, guess what the fans did? Well, I want to go see Jackie play. I want to go see the best uh, players, uh, black players play. So now the fans leave Negro League games, kill the infrastructure of the Negro League, and now Major League Baseball monopolized Negro League. So I say that to say that's what college football the Power Five, the BCS, the PWIs did to HBCU football. I, I truly believe that. Because think about it, I just, I just ran off a list. I just ran off a list of Hall of Fame football players that went to, that went to the league, that went to an HBCU, went to the league, and then now they're in the Hall of Fame. Now, think about, that's Hall of Fame I said. Think about all the other great players that may have not made it to the Hall of Fame, but that went to an HBCU, right? Now, College football was segregated at one point. Blacks could not go to a PWI, right? Could not go. And then once people, once PWIs were integrated, they didn't immediately integrate athletics. 
So though blacks were able to go to the colleges, PWIs, they didn't immediately integrate sports, right? So when your, your, your PWIs start to see how great HBCU football is, how great the black players were, guess what they started doing? Oh, we're going to let you in my college now. And so the same way Major League Baseball monopolized the Negro League, you see that PWIs began to monopolize college football. And now the players that start that were going to the HBCUs, they started to take and allow them to go to your Alabamas, your UTs, your Florida States. Your University of Miami's. And so here we are now in 2021. And you look at every team. That they like 75 to 80% black in college football. Now it's a PWI, but 80% of the football team. 75 to 80% of the football team is black. They monopolized it. To so much to the point. They had people like me growing up not considering a fam you. I remember coach from fam you came into my came into my house. My parents knew who who who, who the coach was. They came in fam you coach came into my house talking to me. Man, I'm talking about my mind was so over. I'm like, oh, I already know. I'm, I'm about to go D1. Like I'm I'm going D1. I I ain't, I'm not even studying, you know, HBCU at the time, right? Why? Because I was so brainwashed. I was so brainwashed to not consider the tradition and to not consider historically black colleges and universities. I was brainwashed because I had seen BCS schools, PWIs, they monopolized it. They started allowing blacks to come to their school, making their football programs better. And so now here I am, I come along in 2007, I'm like, oh man, I gotta go to a PWI. I gotta go D1. And typically it's a PWI. And I disrespected the HBCU football, right? And, I, and, and, and so I understand. And watching Why Not Us and watching different things, I know that historically black colleges and universities it's hard to compete with, and Deion Sanders even said it himself. It's hard. The thing, the only thing that HBCUs are lacking is resources. It's not talent. It's not talent. Now the amount of depth maybe, but they get they got talent, but it's the resources. It's training room, equipment, uh, a meal table. This is what. That, that the HBCUs lack the funding. And so, we got to understand, man, like, we, we, we got to really understand and see what's really going on, man, and, and, and realize that just, like, what we see is not how it's always been. The college landscape is not how it's always been. What, the amount of, like, and, and so, I am a proponent. Like, I would love if my son grew up and wanted to play football. I would love for him to... I would love for him to want to play. Um, I would love for him to want to go to an HBCU. I would. I would, I would love for my son to want to go to an HBCU. Right? Uh, and, and, and the way that it's trending right now, it appears that they're headed in a good space. That if Dion and Eddie George and my boy Coach Simmons at FAMU and, and now Hugh Jackson um, at Grambling State and so on and so on and so on can, can start to get three-star, four-star, five-star recruits turning the game, changing the game to back to how it once was. And these alumni that graduate or that go to these schools go to the NFL and, and make good money. Now they're able to pour back into the, the colleges and, and give back and, and, and improve the overall school. I truly think that we can get back to a place where HBCU reigns in prominence and dominance. 
But it's going to take more people like Travis Hunter. It's going to take more top recruits to really choose to do the traditional thing if you look at history, but the untraditional thing when you ask most people. Right? So, man, salute to Travis Hunter. Salute to Deion Sanders. Salute to Coach Simmons at FAMU. Salute to Hugh Jackson now at Grambling State. And all the historically black. Salute to Eddie George. Root to the good bros at Tennessee State University. Man, y'all continue to do a great job at these colleges, man. Um, continue to raise up great men as well as great football players. And, and I truly see, I truly believe that, that HBCUs are going to get back to a level of, level of prominence in this country and in the landscape of college football and a level of dominance, man. So, man, I appreciate y'all tuning in for this episode of Tackle Thursday with JK. Live on IG, live on Facebook, man. Y'all continue to wake up, striving to win on purpose, be intentional about winning, man. And y'all have a blessed day.